Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be painting up a Harbinger of Decay, one of the most important and key models in the Magakin of Nurgle, and also one of the absolute hardest to get since <laughs> Games Workshop doesn't seem to produce them except for once in a blue moon. And we have here a great example of the flash that's on the fine casts. These very fine cubes that are spread out at every 45 degree angle. You have to go over the models a few times in order to find them because they're so hard to find. I've assembled up to the point of painting where we get in the way of painting. Uh, but only the horse really is assembled together. Everything else is too individualistic and it'd be too hard to paint it if it was all glued together. So moving on after that, I'm going to prime this with gray, bright touch, general purpose car primer. And then while that is drying, I'm going to take Liquitex modeling putty and I'm going to apply it all over the base. I then use a paintbrush to add texture onto it, however, I had to make this base very very thick because apparently, uh, so the model of the horse itself has this strut going through the ground, so uh, there was no holes in the base, so I just decided to pad the ground uh, more to make it fit, however, it was so like fat and thick that when I put the horse in and stuff and then applied texture again a second time, for some reason it evened out and the ground, instead of being uneven and textured, came out kind of smooth, which is going to cause me problems later. And now on to painting. With Pallid Witch Flesh, White Scar, Deathworld Forest, Lamian Medium, and Plague Bear's Flesh, we're going to paint the horse. We're going to start off with the airbrushed and use Pallid Witch Flesh as the base layer. Now my overall idea going in is for it to be a white horse with some sickened green mixed in. And once the Pallid Witch Flesh is dry, we're going to dry brush White Scar White all over the body. And now with the Death World Forest, diluted with Lamian Medium and mixed with water, we want it to basically, we're creating a wash. And the Lamian Medium is just to help it not turn completely watery. We're going to apply this all over the model. We want it to be thin. We, we just want it to green some areas and fill in the recesses. And once that dries, we're going to dry brush White Scar White all over again. We want to keep applying this as a highlight. We'll apply another layer of the diluted Death World Forest mixed with Lamy and Medium all over the model. And then we will overbrush it again. Instead of dry brushing, overbrushing, trying to get pick out the highlights and areas or the upper raised areas more. Now the dry brush does leave like this uh, dusty appearance onto it, and I don't want that. So we're going to go with white scar white or any pure white of your own, and we're going to draw straight lines on all the edges, the folds of the flesh, and the parts where bones are jutting out to make the paint look smooth and focused. Then we're going to apply another watered down coat of Death World Forest with Lamy and Medium. And with White Scar White again, we're going to highlight the most raised areas and the tips of areas. And then with some watered down Plague Bear's Flesh, we're going to apply this to his underside belly, the insides of his legs and stuff. We're going to use this as essentially the shadowing. I should have watered it down a bit more though, I will note that. And when that's done and dry, we're going to take some Gullum and Flesh, I didn't show it beforehand. We're going to water it down a little bit and we're going to apply it directly into the cracks of the flesh. They're all scattered throughout.
Alright, so I'm going to try something a little new. I'm going to take some Skeleton Horde Contrast, water down, and I'm going to apply it to the skull bone part of his face. Then I'm going to take some White Scar White and I'm going to highlight the edges of his bones here, including the little dots for his teeth. Once that's done, I'm going to apply a second layer of Skeleton Horde Contrast on him. Now with Mornfang Brown XV88 and Golem and Flesh, we're going to paint the horse's mane and tail. We're going to start off with a base layer of Mornfang Brown. And when that dries, what we're going to do is we're going to do a series of dry brushes and over brushes. We're going to dry brush the whole of the mane and tail with XV88. Then we're going to go back and dry brush again about two thirds of the way up, or in height. The, the hair that's closer to the ground will be darker. And then we'll do a final over brush towards the very top of each, except for the tail. The tail is reversed, the edges of it, the very tip of it is brighter. And this is going to create a small contrast of color going from dark at the roots of the hair all the way out. And then with Gullum and Flesh, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to apply it in certain places. I'm imagining like matted blood spread out here and there. So we're going to apply this uh, into the hair and around the area and stuff to like, pick out certain areas and make it look dirty or mangy. And once again, going back to Mornfang Brown and XV88, we're going to paint these ropes that are going around the horse. We're going to start off with a base layer of Mornfang Brown. Now, the model is detailed enough that the rope, you can clearly see the knots. So with XV88, we're just going to paint straight lines on each of the knots. We're going to paint like three or four times on each knot, up and down, so you can see the differentiation. And then once that's done, I'm going to overbrush. Um, like on some places, there are like these knots and stuff where hair is tied to these ropes. And so this is just going to help with the rope part of the hair tie. And now with Dawnstone and Rhinox Hide, we're going to just do the finishing details on the horse. With Dawnstone, we're going to apply this on the eyes. One on his left and one on his right. The one on the right side of his face is a little harder to do. And Rhinox Hide will be used to paint the hooves on the horse. And now with Lead Belcher, Nuln Oil, Plague Bearer's Flesh, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Gulliman Flesh, we're going to be painting the metal. Although, actually, looking back, I should have varnished the model first in the Ultra Matte and then moved on to the metals, but neither here nor there. First, we're going to start off with Lead Belcher all over all the metal pieces. And then once that is done, we're again going to take Nuln Oil and apply it all over the metal pieces. His armor, his scythe, and a few other bits of pieces of metal and his gauntlets. Once that has dried, we're going to dry brush Lead Belcher again onto all the metal pieces.
And once that's done, we're going to take some watered down skeleton horde contrast and apply that all over all the metal pieces. And once that's done, we're going to take Lead Belcher and we're going to highlight the very edges of each piece of metal uh, to bring out some more of the shine and put some more light and focus on it to make it pop a bit. Now this is where it comes to personal preference. I'm going to do another layer of Skeleton Horde Contrast on select pieces of the armor. More specifically, I'm going to paint every piece of metal that is not his shoulder pads, his stomach plate. Apart from those things, everything else is going to be painted in Skeleton Horde Contrast. And now with Plague Bearer's Flesh, we're going to apply this on the shoulder pads and his stomach plate. And this is going to green the metal. And now with Ryza Rust, Nih, Hup, this Oxide color, and Gulliman Flesh, we're going to add the finishing touches onto the metal. With Ryza Rust, we're going to apply this all over the blade, parts of his gauntlets, parts of his armor where like there's like holes or dents or cuts in there, and parts of his chainmail. Just have fun with it. Just apply it where you think it should go. Not over, uh, we don't want to oversaturate, we just want a little bit. It drops here and there. And once that's done, we're going to take our Oxide color and we're going to apply drops here and there on any places where we put too much riser rust or any places just to add a little bit of flavor. We want to add very little. It is to add character, not to be a focal point. And once that's done, with Gullum and Flesh, we're going to apply this onto his scythe. When blood dries, it turns brown. And Gullum and Flesh will look pretty good as to give the appearance of dried blood. And now with Castell and Green, Seraph, Seraphim Sepiep and Death World Force, we're going to paint his cloaks. We're going to start with a layer of Castell and Green on his cloaks on his legs, his arms, and his head. And once that's done, we're going to coat all of them in Seraphim Sepia. And once that is done, we're then going to dry brush Castell and Green on all the cloaks. And once that is done, we're then going to go with Death World Forest, and then we're going to highlight. We're going to draw straight lines. Make sure you have a fine brush for this on all the folds and edges of his robes. And once that is done, we're going to apply another Seraphim Cephia, which, looking back, actually looks like a shade version of Skeleton Horde Contrast. And once that is done, we're going to do a final highlight again with Death World Forest on the very edges of the folds of his robes. And now with Pallid Witch Flesh, Agrax or Shade, Seraph Cephium, the Seraphim Cephia, Corn Red, and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint his staff, with, or his scythe. With Pallid Witch Flesh, it's going to be the base layer for all the wood. And once that is done, we're going to take Agrax or Shade and apply it all over to add the depth. And once that is done, we're going to apply two coats of Seraph Cephium in there to make it look, to give it a warm wood looking color. And now with corn red and a fine brush, we're going to paint the 
eyes of the ghostly screams from this wood staff. If you dip, if it spills a little over, just wipe it clean right now with your finger. And once that is dry, we're going to go with Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to apply a tiny dot to focus the eyes, like the pupil of the eyes. And now with Mornfang Brown, Nolan Oil, and XV88, we're going to paint the wood shield that is on his back. We're going to start with the base layer of Mornfang Brown. And once that has dried, we'll apply a simple layer of Nolan Oil. I wanted to differentiate it from the ropes and stuff, and the Nolan Oil will make it like look very different. And once that is done, we're going to take the Mornfang Brown and we're just going to paint straight lines with a good fine brush up and down to add the wood grain. And once that is done, we're going to go with XV88 and do a very fine wood grain on it. Looking back, I probably would have mixed 1 to 1 Mornfang and XV88, because the XV88 is a little too powerful here, in contrast. And now with Doombull Brown and Nolan Oil, we're going to paint some leather. He has a sheath on his sword that's torn open and these two bags in the front. I'm going to paint them leather. So we're going to start off with a base layer of Doombull Brown. And when that's done, we're going to coat them all in a thin layer of Nolan Oil, just enough to show the recesses. And then when that's dry, we're going to go back with some Doom Bowl Brown and we're going to paint along the edges of the folds of the sack and as the edges of the seat sheath. Yeah. I then go back and try to make it pop a little bit and I take some Pallid Witch Flesh and mix it with the Mornfang Brown and to lighten it and then I use this as a final highlight on the Saxon sheath. And now with Xandry Dust and Skeleton Horde Contrast we're going to paint these skulls or partial skulls that are on the horse. So we're going to start off with a base layer of Xandry Dust. And then once that's done, we're going to take some Skeleton Horde Contrast and apply it to the bone parts. It's part bone, part flesh, so we're focusing on the bone. And once that's done, we're going to highlight them with a fine brush, all the edges of the bone, or at least what I can tell is bone and not flesh, with Xandry Dust again. With Cadian Fleshstone, Baylor Brown, Plague Bear's Flesh, and Golem and Flesh, we're going to paint the flesh parts of the skulls. We're going to start off with the base layer of Cadian Fleshstone on as far as we can tell what is flesh on these things. And then once that's done, we're going to take Baylor Brown and we're going to apply it all over the hair that goes up and goes through the rope knots. And once that is done, we're going to apply a thin layer of Gullum and Flesh all throughout the hair, and as well as the flesh. And once that is done, we're then going to apply one more layer of Plague Bear's Flesh onto it to, like, give it a sickly green color. And now with Lead Belcher and Rhinox Hide, we're going to do some finishing details. With Lead Belcher, we're going to paint this metal hook that I completely missed, that's holding up one of the heads. And then with Rhinox Hide, we're going to use this to paint these leather straps that are on the sword. Alright, with Steel Legion Drab, Agrax Earthshade, and Bane Blade Brown, we're going to paint the horns coming out of his head. We're not going to do anything big, we're just going to do something simple. We're going to start off with Steel Legion Drab. And 
then we're going to apply Agrax Earth Shade to show all the shading and shadows. And then once that's dry, we're going to overbrush Steel Legion Drab Dry Brush, somewhat overbrush all over the horns. And then once that's done, we're going to take a fine brush and we're going to paint straight lines of Bane Blade Brown along all the edges, uh, raised areas that are shown in the model, and in a few places in the flat areas to add some texture of our own. The model is mostly done, so I'm going to go ahead and start gluing. I'm going to apply super glue onto the base and then apply the horse onto it. Now one thing I would recommend is applying the sword onto the back of the model first and then gluing it on. It's a little hard to get it on afterwards. But uh, the rest of the model is just very simple uh, to apply together. It's not really that hard. And now with Eschen Grey, Nuln Oil, and Dawnstone, we're going to paint the crow on the wood sign. We use Eschen Grey as our base layer on the crow. And then once that dries, we're going to take Nuln Oil and apply it all over the crow. And once that has dried, we're going to take Eschen Grey and we're going to dry brush all over the crow. And then once that's done, we're going to take Dawnstone and we're going to dry brush to a finer dry brush all over the crow, mostly focusing on the head and the upper half. And then finally, although I didn't show it, we're going to take Baylor Brown and then we're going to paint his little feet. And now in a step I should have done way earlier with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to apply this all over the model except for the metal pieces. And once that's done, we're going to take, you can take any black color, I just took a very dark color so it could be to show off, uh, versus this wood sign, and I just painted the simple word Nuln for the city of Nuln since this was created around that time. I know the box art shows Kislev, but I wasn't going to bother with writing that name. Well, the crow indent that I made for the base won't work because I didn't know the staff would be in the way. And so I decided to fill it with some uh, brown moss. I fill it around the area and a few other spots using super glue. And then I just randomly glue the crow post into a random spot. And then I decide to add some more flavor to it. So with a uh, Elmer's glue gel glue, because it's really good for holding together uh, basing materials. And then apply this on most parts of the ground and then I apply sand onto it. This goes horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> Sand is applied well, but the ground is too soft. There's like no texture on it. For some reason, since there was so much, it like flattened out a bit. I applied my usual pigment powders onto it, but it really just like infested the sand and made it look... It, it, it just did not go together. The base looks terrible. So I tried to fix this with a bunch of Nurgle's Rot mixed with yellow ink. And so I mix the Nurgle's Rot and yellow ink together until it's a bright yellow. Then I apply this on the base and it doesn't look any better at all. And then with Blood for the Blood God, we're going to apply some finishing touches. We're going to apply this all over, like, um, on the places where the flesh meets the heads, on the heads that are hanging, uh, flowing out from the sacks that are there, uh, as well as the blade, or his scythe, and just anywhere else to add a little character and flavor, as well as the cracked flesh of the horse in certain areas. And after applying our basing color of choice, it I'm going to call it done. So I hate the base. <laughs> so this is a very interesting model. This is a fine cast model. 
But it seems like all the focus and detail went to everything except the rider. Only his staff is like worthy of being fine cast because of the horrified like ghost shrieking faces in it and the crow. That crow is well detailed. But like the hair on the horse is very well detailed as well as the shape of his body and like the jutting bones and the, like, anemic flesh. This model is pretty simple and straightforward, but it's not really that exciting. Like, all the focus is really on the horse. The rider itself is pretty bland and boring in side-by-side -side comparison with the Blight Kings, which came out, I believe, around the same time, relatively. So, this model probably could just be a regular plastic model. There's not really much here that warrants the fine cast apart from that really nice horse hair. But apart from that, I'm going to give my work, I would have given it a 7 out of 10. I mean, like, in some areas it's good, some areas it's, it's meh, it's not. So, the model in itself, ignoring the base, I did nothing bad, but in some areas I really didn't do anything great or wowing, so I can't really give it much apart from a 7 out of 10. However, the base I hate so much and it looks so bad, I could have to knock it down a point and I'm going to say I'm 6 out of 10 for overall. Very disappointed. But normally I would put this on eBay immediately like most of my other kits. However, this model kit is so hard to get a hold of, I need it for my army. So I can't actually replace this easily. So I'm keeping it. I'll live forever with this failure. Alright. So that's it. We'll be moving on to another Nurgle model kit. I just want to knock these out for when Slanesh finally comes. So like the video if you like the video. Leave a comment if you want to comment on anything. Uh, share the video if you want to share it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.